Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a thriller film, The Call. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a pretty girl nicknamed Beauty, arriving at her old childhood home in the rural area with the town's farmer. Beauty loses her phone on the train while traveling to visit her sick mother, so she searches for a phone and finds an old cordless phone. She immediately contacts her phone and the finder answers it. Beauty politely asks for the finder to return it. She hears another voice encouraging the finder to get a reward for the phone. Then the finder suddenly drops the phone call, so Beauty tries to contact it again, but unfortunately the finder has turned it off. Moments later, Beauty receives an on-phone call from a distressed woman who claims that her mother abuses her. The woman thinks she is calling her friend, so Beauty explains that she had the wrong number, so the woman drops the call. Later that day, Beauty is at the hospital, and the doctor informs her that her mother needs to be transferred to another hospital, as they have no equipment to remove her mother's tumor. Following that, Beauty's mother suggests that she will be buried beside her father's tomb, which greatly pisses off Beauty as she thinks her mother does not deserve to be buried with her father. After that, Beauty leaves the hospital and goes home, where she receives another phone call from the distressed woman, who now claims that her mother tortures her. Again, Beauty informs the woman that she had the wrong number. Later that night, Beauty wakes up from the loud noise coming upstairs. So she goes up and sees that a painting has fallen. Beauty hammers a nail on the wall, but it just suddenly disappears. She puts a nail again and hears it rattling on the other side. Out of curiosity, Beauty destroys the wall and finds stairs leading to an underground room. Beauty goes down and wanders the room with only a flashlight, where she finds a box full of old and dusty things. A journal catches Beauty's attention because of its disturbing contents. So she flips the pages and a photograph suddenly falls. The following day, Beauty asks the farmer about the picture. So he informs her that the woman in the picture is named Sook, who had lived in the house with her shaman mother decades ago. Later that day, the distressed woman calls Beauty again, but Beauty still thinks she's calling her friend's number. The woman's voice is more agitated, claiming her mother will put her on fire. But before Beauty can talk to her, the woman's mother drags her away. Beauty drops the call, spooked by what she just heard. On the other hand, the woman is seen fighting her mother, who tries to put her on fire, which causes the Emperor Fire to fall. Then, Beauty sees smoke coming from the secret stairs, and when she lights it, the steps suddenly appear on fire. The woman who was revealed to be Sook calls again. So Beauty informs her that they live in the same house, but at different times. Beauty lives in 2019, while Sook lives in 1999. However, Sook does not believe Beauty's claims, so Beauty searches for an accident in 1999, which is a plane crash and will occur soon in Sook's dimension. She then shares it with Sook. Later that night, while Sook has an unpleasant dinner with her mother, she sees the accident that Beauty told her. After dinner, Sook immediately calls Beauty, and they exchange information about their lives. Beauty lets Sook hear her idol's music and shares the recent advancement in technology like the smartphone, while Sook shares about the Walkman. Then, Beauty tries to find Sook on the internet, but Sook stops her, as her mother tells her that she is cursed. Also, Sook shares that she is an orphan, and the woman she is living with is her adoptive mother, who is a shaman. After that, Beauty shares that her mother forgot to turn off the gas valve that caused a fire in her house, which caused Beauty to lose her father at a young age. Then, Sook hears her shaman mother come into her room, so she bids goodbye and immediately drops the call. The following day, Sook meets the young Beauty and her family, who are the potential buyers of the house. Excited by that, Sook calls Beauty and lets her listen to her then alive father's voice again, which causes Beauty to cry. Then Sook suddenly suggests that she could bring Beauty's father back into life. Later that day, Sook sneaks out of the house and goes to Beauty's home to prevent the fire that killed her father. Meanwhile, Yumi patiently waits for Sook to call, and suddenly, her reality changes. She gets her phone back, and the burned mark on her leg vanishes. Her room also changes, along with her hair and clothing style. So, Beauty gets out of her room and sees that the house has transformed into a more lavish style. Then, she goes to the back, to the farm, where she sees her parents both alive and healthy. Beauty hugs her father tightly, sobbing as she misses him so much, which confuses her parents. After that, Beauty calls Sook and expresses her gratitude for saving her father's life and changing her reality. In return, Beauty lets Sook record her idol's music and her Walkman every day. Later on, Beauty starts to get busier with her own life that she often forgets to answer the call, which enraged Sook. Until one night, Beauty finally answers the phone, and Sook expresses her rage by calling Beauty offensive names. Then suddenly, she hears Sook's screams, and Sook's mother warns Beauty not to talk to Sook ever again. 
That night, Sook's shaman mother performs a sadistic ritual to Sook to drive away from her bad omen. The mother repeatedly hits Sook with a stick, causing her to shake and cry from the pain. Sook begs her mother constantly to free her, but her mother continues the ritual. Suddenly, the mother sees an appalling vision of Sook and a lot of blood. The following day, Yumi tries to find Sook on different social media platforms, but she fails. So she tries to search on Google, where she finds out that Sook was killed by her mother during an exorcism to cure her mental illness. Meanwhile, Sook's mother goes to the store and sees a massive bandage around her leg. Later that day, Beauty anxiously waits for Sook to call, and when she finally does, Beauty immediately informs her mother will kill her that night. Later that night, the mother goes into Sook's room with a knife and repeatedly stabs the figure on the bed. But she quickly realizes that she has stabbed a pillow, so she looks for Sook, who is hiding behind the door. Sook closes the door and angrily confronts her mother. So her mother informs her that her fortune says several deaths will be caused by her in her future. Sook laughs maniacally like a crazy woman and then opens a fire extinguisher in the room. The mother gasps and coughs from the smoke while Sook takes the knife and stabs her mother. After that, Sook calls to lie to Beauty that she and her mother had a misunderstanding and that everything is fine now. Beauty sighs in relief, unaware of Sook's lie. Given her new freedom, Sook goes out and experiences the life that her mother forbade her for years. She eats many chickens and buys a lot of new clothes. Meanwhile, the farmer arrives at Beauty's house, carrying boxes of fresh strawberries from his farm. The family warmly welcomes the farmer into their home and invites him to eat with them. At the same time, the younger farmer arrives at Sook's house, also carrying fresh strawberries. Sook lets the farmer into her messy home and then leaves him, so the farmer goes to the kitchen to put the strawberries in the refrigerator. However, a foul smell from the black bags greets him. He tries to put them out, but happens to find human remains inside. The farmer drops the bag in horror. Shortly after, Sook returns and sees that the farmer has discovered her secret. She thumbs angrily, then leaves to get a fire extinguisher. While she is busy with that, the farmer takes the phone and unknowingly contacts Beauty. Beauty hears the farmer's shaking voice and pleading, and then she hears Sook's voice before the call ends. Beauty is confused because of that, but then her reality changes again. She goes down looking for the farmer, but neither of her parents remembers him. She then checks the refrigerator and sees that all of the strawberries are gone. What's worse, Beauty goes to the strawberry farm and sees that everything there has been abandoned for a long time. To ensure that her suspicion is correct, Beauty goes to the police department, where one of the officers says that the farmer has been dead for years. The officer takes a booklet about the farmer's case and lets Beauty read it. According to it, the farmer was killed and mutilated at Sook's house. At the same time, two policemen ask Sook about the farmer and his sudden disappearance. Sook lies that she does not know the farmer, but one of the officers sees the boxes of strawberries inside the house. Again, Sook lies that her mother must have taken the strawberries from the farmer, so the policeman asks to talk to her mother. For the third time, Sook lies that her mother left the house two days ago, which raises suspicions as the farmer went missing the day after Sook's mother's departure. So Sook quickly retracts her statement and calmly talks to the police. On the other hand, Beauty visits Sook's friend to gather information about Sook. The friend shares that Sook harmed her one day, leaving a massive scar on her leg. Fortunately, Sook's mother helped her to escape. Later that day, Sook calls Beauty to ask a favor, but Beauty confronts her about her shaman mother and the farmer's death. Sook tries to deny the accusation, so Beauty reads the headline of Sook being sentenced to life imprisonment for accounts of murder, which infuriates Sook. Therefore, she instructs Beauty to find what kind of evidence the police found out. But when Beauty does not answer, Sook reminds her that she saved Beauty's father's life. Beauty drops the call, overwhelmed by the recent events. But Sook contacts her again, even more furious than she was before, because Beauty refuses to help her escape her macabre deeds. Again, Beauty drops the call and disconnects the phone, which causes Sook to be fuming mad. Beauty cries as she realizes that she accidentally let a serial killer live. Moments later, while Sook continuously contacts Beauty, she receives sudden guests. The young Beauty and her father come to inform Sook that they have been waiting for her mother to come to the realtor's office to seal the deal about the house. A sick idea comes to Sook, so she pretends that her mother is home and lets the young Beauty and her father inside the house. Meanwhile, in 2019, Beauty's father notices his daughter's odd silence the whole day. So to distract her, he teaches her how to drive. Back in 1999, Sook uses the fire extinguisher to kill Beauty's father. At the same time in 2019, Beauty's reality changes again because of that. Her father and the car slowly turn into dust. Beauty repeatedly screams while tears fall from her eyes as she realizes what is happening. 
As her father finally vanishes, Beauty runs back to the house, only to find it in an abandoned state. Right then, Beauty sees Sook's instruction to answer the call on the floor. And the phone rings, so she finds and answers it. Sook laughs maniacally to insult and anger Beauty. She then gives Beauty an hour to find out how she will be arrested. Without any choice, Beauty immediately goes to search for information about Sook's arrest. After investigating, Beauty informs Sook that a junk collector finds a knife that contains blunt and fingerprints of Sook will be the key evidence of her arrest. Then the smart Beauty gives false information on where Sook could find and stop the junk collector. Deceived by Beauty's lies, Sook goes to the warehouse that Beauty told her. Sook smokes inside while waiting for the junk collector, unaware of a gas leak. Beauty patiently waits for the clock to reach 5 p.m., the time that the warehouse exploded from gas, according to her research. Meanwhile, Sook goes out as she hears noises. She walks back to the warehouse and discovers it is just noisy puppies. Before she could enter again, the warehouse suddenly exploded right into her face. After that, Beauty anxiously waits for Sook to be dead. But unfortunately, the phone rings again, which means Sook is still alive. Beauty answers the call and hears her younger self, pleading with Sook not to harm her. Beauty cries in frustration and shock as she realizes that Sook held the young beauty captive in the house. Furious about Beauty's betrayal, Sook pours boiling water on the young beauty, which causes her to scream in pain as she can feel the heat and pain in her body. Beauty cries as burn marks appear on her current body. Sook then informs her that her mother is coming to the house. She taunts Beauty that they are the same because Beauty is the one who opened the gas valve that caused her father's death, which she actually blamed on her mother. After that, Beauty breaks into the local police station for the notebook used in 1999 and gives Sook the correct information about her arrest. So Sook retrieves her knife from the junk collector, which consequently changes the notebook's content. So Beauty reads the new content that her mother came to Sook's house with a police officer and made a call on a cordless phone. Apparently, what Beauty reads in the notebook happens at the exact same time in 1999. Because of the changes in the past, Beauty's reality changes again, and she is still in the same house, but it is now owned by an older Sook. Right now, Beauty sees a bunch of refrigerators, all of which contain human remains, indicating that Sook has continued as a serial killer and committed many murders for these years. Then, she goes downstairs, finds the foam in the room, and waits for it to ring. A few minutes later, it finally rings, and Beauty frantically warns her mother to run away from the house, as Sook will kill her. Suddenly, older Sook shows up to attack Beauty, while at that same time in 1999, the younger Sook kills the police officer. The phone rings again, so Beauty tries to take it, but Sook does not let her, and they engage in a struggle. Beauty quickly recovers from the fight, takes the phone with her, and runs upstairs while Sook chases after her. At that same time in 1999, Sook runs after Beauty's mother after killing the policeman. Simultaneously, Beauty and her mother run into Sook's room and quickly lock it. Then the phone rings again, so Beauty answers it, calms her mother, and encourages her to fight Sook. Beauty's mother sees a fire extinguisher, so Beauty instructs her to wait for Sook to barge in to spray it at her face. However, Sook uses the young Beauty to lure out the mother and wants to kill her. Meanwhile, in 2019, Beauty dismisses the older Sook, slowly breaks into the room, and patiently waits for her mother. Back in 1999, Beauty's mother fights back the younger Sook with her bare hands against the knife and pushes Sook at the edge of the rail with herself, presumably killing both of them, which instantly changes 2019. Then the house is deteriorated and the older Sook has vanished. Beauty leaves the house and goes to the hospital and police station, looking for her mother. However, she cannot find her so she goes to her father's grave, where she suddenly emotionally reunites with her mother, who is alive and well despite the knife scars on her hands. This indicates that the mother survived the incident in 1999. After that, Beauty clings to her mother as they walk away from the cemetery. But then we can see an alternative scene with a different ending, where the older Sook returns and informs her younger self about Beauty's mother and the police officer who will cause her death. Because of that, the younger Sook manages to change the reality again in her dimension, and thus erases Beauty's mother in the present. The film ends with Beauty back in the torture room, where she most likely will meet her death by Sook. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.